Pop Rocks, probably the most fun candy to play with, especially when you were a kid. But haven't you ever wondered what the secret is to trapping the pop in the Pop Rocks? And it turns out this is actually a pretty easy question to answer once you understand how these candies are made. Let's get into it. Pop Rocks were the brainchild of a research chemist by the name of William Mitchell. And in the 1950s, Mitchell worked for a company called General Foods. General Foods later changed the name to Kraft Foods, and then Kraft Foods today we know as Kraft Heinz. But in the 50s, Mitchell was actually trying to develop an instant soda tablet. So he's working with carbonating a hard candy. And instead of making this soda tablet, he actually gets this sort of candy that fizzes and hisses in your mouth, or Pop Rocks as we know today. So like all good inventions, Pop Rocks was just an accident. And Mitchell in 1961 actually patented his process of making Pop Rocks. So we have access to his original method on this four page patent called Gasified Confections and the Making of the Same. And like most patents, this is incredibly confusing to read and it was written to be confusing. Patents are the worst thing to read. I hate reading them. But these four pages we have from Mitchell actually really give us a lot of hints on how Pop Rocks are made. The process of making Pop Rocks starts by just mixing your ingredients together. So you take sucrose, that's table sugar, lactose, that's the sugar we see in milk, and corn syrup. And we add some water to dissolve all these sugars into a watery mixture. And the next step is heating up this mixture. And we actually heat it to pretty high temperatures, usually to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, because what this does is actually boils off a lot of the water we added at the beginning to simply dissolve the sugars. So we're heating up this, this mixture, boiling off most of the water until about only 2% of the water is left because as you might have suspected, Pop Rocks is mostly sugar. Once you have enough water boiled off, you're sort of left with this sugary syrup. And the next step involves transferring that syrup into a pressure chamber. And the pressure chamber is kept at a very specific temperature, 240 degrees Fahrenheit, because at that temperature, the sugar syrup has the right viscosity or sort of the right thickness to it. And because once we put the syrup in the pressure chamber, we actually inject carbon dioxide gas, and that gas is maintained at 600 PSI, so that's a pretty high pressure. So as we inject the carbon dioxide gas, we sort of agitate or stir that sugar syrup so that tiny gas bubbles start to sort of get incorporated within the candy. And if it's at the right viscosity, sort of the right thickness, these tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide actually get trapped within the candy. And you can see this if you look at Pop Rocks under a microscope, you can see that there's actually these tiny bubbles of carbon dioxide still trapped within the candy. So this is a really key step because remember those, the gas was at a really high pressure, about 20 times the pressure of your bike tires. So we're actually trapping within the candy a gas that is at high pressure. Still under pressure, we transfer the sugar syrup into a new part of the chamber that is no longer temperature controlled. So this is at a much lower temperature. And when we do this, the sugar syrup cools so rapidly, we form what's called a glass. And the sugar syrup, when it's cooled, it actually traps in those high pressure bubbles. But because it's cooled so quickly, the molecules sort of got stuck wherever they were. And this is what is called a glass. And I know it's sort of weird to think of your food as a glass, but all a glass means is that when you have such a rapid cooling rate, the molecules get stuck and they sort of act solid-like as long as you sort of store it at a stable, in stable conditions. So when we have really fast cooling, we get what's called a glass. And this is what Pop Rocks is. If for example, we did slower cooling, we would end up with what's known as crystalline material or crystals. 
because when you do a slow cooling of a sugar syrup, all the sugar molecules have a chance to arrange themselves into these very intricate patterns. And it is this repeating pattern that actually makes up crystals. So really important for Pop Rocks, you have to do rapid cooling to get it into a glass. After solidification, you actually transfer the candy to a second chamber. And this in this chamber, it's shock treated, which I think is just a fancy way of saying sort of like a hammer is taken to the candy to break it into the smaller pieces that we know as Pop Rocks. And once it's sort of broken down, you can just vent the pressure out and your candy can sort of fall out of the chamber. And trapping those pressurized carbon dioxide bubbles is the key to that sort of fizzy or hissing noise in your mouth. Because as long as the candy's stored under cool and dry conditions, those bubbles should be trapped within that sugar glass. But when, what happens when you put the Pop Rocks in your mouth is the mixture of your saliva and the hot temperatures in your mouth start to dissolve the sugar glass and finally that those high pressure bubbles are freed. So the noise or the sort of fireworks in your mouth, that noise is just the high pressure finally being released. Well, now you know that Pop Rocks are actually a glass that has trapped in these tiny carbon dioxide bubbles at high pressures. So that fizziness or those explosions, that noise is just that high pressure being released in your mouth. So kind of a weird concept for a candy, but obviously it was a huge hit. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, please subscribe to my channel or give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.